I'm going to be doing my September reading wrap up. It was again another really good reading month for me. I read seven to eight-ish books if you count the one that I DNF'd because you know why you DNF books. So I started off by finishing the Dreamers series. This is a four book series by David and Lee Eddings containing the Elder Gods, the Treasured One, the Crystal Gorge and the Younger Gods. This series follows a platoon of characters from the shores of the world as they are hired by the four Elder Gods to protect their land against that called the Vla, who is the ruler of the wasteland as the Vla would like to eat everyone and everything, which is not a great thing you know, when you're gods of a, of a country. And these outlanders join with the natives in the land of Drahl and they fight four separate battles in this war in the west, the south, the north and the east if I remember very correctly. Despite the encouraging five star start with the elder gods, this series kind of didn't better itself. It kind of flattened out I guess you could say uh, with a 4.9 stars if you want to get picky, a 3.5 five stars again if you want to get picky and then a three star finish in the last book. That's simply because there were a lot more noticeable nuances in terms of repetitiveness. You were constantly viewing the same event over and over again from different perspectives and while that's a good you know medium because it helps the reader to remember what happened and gives a wider viewpoint on what happened. After three books it gets just like a little unneeded. The reason why the last book got three stars which tends to be my tell of I don't know whether I like this book or not because like the ending how how all this like ended you go through three battles and you get to the end and it, it's almost as though telling you like it didn't matter I don't know if I like that like it could be like ingenious like wow you you've tied us in full circle fabulous but on the other hand it's like you just made me read four books to tell me that I didn't have to read the four books it's one of those endings and it just I don't know if I liked it or not it's it's rubbing me the wrong way guys the the next book that I read is actually a manga called A Silent Voice by Yoshitoki Oma. If I pronounced her name wrong, I'm Moldy. Chinese, Japanese dialect pronunciations and Moldy pronunciations are a lot different and I'm so fucking sorry. So far, this book is about bullying, what it's like to be the bully and what it's like to be the victim of bullying. Specifically, it's about a boy called Shoya and a girl called Shoko who is deaf and the boy bullies the girl as she is transferred into his class and the biggest thing that I liked about this is how brutal yet realistic the bullying is a lot of the time in books you don't see a realistic portrayal of bullying like you see bullying but at the same time it's like it's not like that's not how it really happens this one did not sugarcoat bullying in a high school or like I grade school you know there's writing on desks and on chalkboards where they tell you know whoever, whomever they're bullying to go kill themselves which is very very realistic in this day and age I remember going to school myself and seeing you know graffiti like that all over the bathroom stalls so yeah it just felt really realistic and I appreciated that and seeing it in a manga I can't wait to get the rest of the series I'm probably gonna bolt buy it because I have no concept of money apparently <laughs> the next book that I read was love and misadventure by Lang Lee this is a short collection of poetry by Langleave about love and misadventure. Just fucking fantastic at blurbs, you know? I've been reading Langleave's work for free online for like years now because I follow her on social media and she so generously posts her work online. You know, I remember being a, you know, a younger teenager and really enjoying her stuff and I thought it was about time that I supported the girl and bought a physical copy of one of her books. So that is what I have done and although I didn't relate to it because it is a little too angsty for how I how old I am now and some of the poems are quite uh, specific and personal. Uh, I did really enjoy the retrospection that the nostalgia of reading these poetries caused in me so I then read another collection of poetry and that's Milk and Honey by Rupi Kerb. There's no really like rhythm or rhyme, there's no punctuation, there's no capital letters, it's very Tumblr-esque and this is just the bur blurb. Admittedly it's got some, now let me find my favourite it's about the only one that I liked. There's some very beautiful kind of like hand-drawn sketches throughout the book that I can gel with but at the same time I definitely developed some negative thoughts and feelings towards this book mainly because so many people have read it yet no one has given a sexually explicit content warning on it. There is rape and molestation in the first couple of pages and it goes on to talk about plowing. The word plow is actually used in a sexual reference. Power to you! 
If you're so sexual and you can read this with comfortability, but some people like myself cannot, we get really awkward when reading this stuff and we don't know how to handle it. And it's the kind of content that I have to psych myself up for and I, I put this book down, had a little bit of a cry, I psyched myself up to finish it. So I didn't really enjoy the fact that this is a well read book. This is a well talked about book, especially on booktube. Why did no one warn me? On the other hand, this poetry is incredibly personal and it feels like I'm reading someone's diary. It's very specific in terms of, I guess, maybe Rupi Kerr's story. Book is the book that I DNF'd and it is again another heavily recommended book on booktube and that is The Girl Who Circumnavigated Fear by Catherine Envelant. <laughs> you see that first sentence, you see the title? That's like the best sentence out of this entire book because at least it gets to the fucking point. This book feels very James Barry-esque and C.S. Lewis-esque. It's got that very whimsical tone to it, or at least it tries to have that whimsical tone. It doesn't quite get there. It is just bogged down with description after description after description. And after getting 75% of the way through this book, I realized A, I didn't feel anything towards this book B. I felt so little that I don't care what happens at the end. Usually I like I have to finish a book because A it can't beat me and B I need to know the ending and no I will not skip to the end. But I literally couldn't even be bothered and still can't be bothered skipping to the end because I don't care how this book ends. Yeah. I should probably go do my fucking hair. Stop being a lazy shit. I don't know what the fuck that is. Is that primary? I don't even remember.